Good morning guys, I hope everyone is uh, happy and everything is going on well. I uh, just want to say, um, praying for, for DMX, a quick recovery. <clears throat> uh, and I also just want to thank you for tuning on to this uh, uh, video. Please press the like button and share the video because there's some something important I'm gonna say in this video um, <clears throat> I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm tattooing this video it's, it's more like a questions uh, of uh, uh, are African leaders clones uh, is are our leaders have they been cloned I know it sounds stupid it sounds like oh yeah that's not that's not possible and and all that some people might even say oh that's a stupid idea but you know what it's not far first i think it's very possible because i've never seen leaders go to europe like african leaders do you know anything any little thing you're going to europe a cough they are going to europe even just sometimes they go to europe for no reason well you know like it's not hard <clears throat> to start wondering that how can I'm actually thinking of doing like a, a like a, like a, like a thirty-minute cartoon video uh, where I, we try to explain how this could be possible. It's very, very possible. The technology has gone so far. You know, they might not even um, they might not even clone them. They just mess up their brains. You know, and when, when, most of the time when they when these guys go to Europe, they go and live in some fancy hotel uh, for presidents. You know, it's very possible that, you know, they could put something in those rooms where when they go to sleep, these guys pass out, they take them out, do the operations on them, bring, the, bring them back three days later and they wake up and they just thought it was a normal day. You know, the other way is they could do it even in the rooms, you know, turn the whole room into a hospital lab and do something to these people uh, brain wise and make them actually servants of Europeans. You know, where is the evidence for this? Where is the evidence that uh, these people have been... Where is the evidence that something either... Either they've been cloned or they've done something to their brains to let them um, think of Europeans as, as saviors and always do things in the interest of Europeans, uh, of people in Europe, than, uh, than in the interest of their own people. Where's the evidence? Oh, well, we don't have to look far. Let me take what's happening in Mozambique, right? This area, Mozambique got flooded, I think about three, four years ago. Gets flooded. People get evacuated, all right? In this uh, northern part of uh, 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 Mozambique, about 300,000 people live there. They get evacuated. They've, these people have been living at peace. You've never had any drama in this area, right? Now, when the water subsides, they find out, not even the people, the government, the scientists will find out this place is full of gas. Gas. About $20 billion worth of gas and more. Lots of money. That's bigger than the than the than the country's economy. You know, if they use that gas, I don't know if you've ever heard of a country called Kuwait. In Kuwait, if you if you if you were um, if you are old enough, you remember the desert storm, not tropical not tropical thunder. Uh, was I think it was desert storm, which was like the Gulf the Gulf War. Uh, and this is when uh, America sort of. Um, there was something where they said uh, Iraq was planning on, on attacking Kuwait. It was, it was all BS, right? The usual American tactics. But this country, it's the biggest producer of gas. And I tell you what, it's, it's, <coughs> it's, it's, it's developed. It's developed. The people of Kuwait were one of the poorest people in the world. You know, in the 80s, this country was poor. Now, it's fully developed. If you are from Kuwait, born there, if when you get married, 
the government gives you money just for just to help you guys plan your mar your weddings and, and, and jumpstart your lives. I think it's like fifty thousand dollars they give. This is in Kuwait. You know, you look it up. You look it up, Kuwait. You think it looks better than New York? It looks better than most major cities in Europe. It's high rise, fully developed. Just and it's the biggest producer of gas. Mozambique, with the amount of gas they have, they are going to be the second gas producer in the world. Second to Kuwait by 2024. But here's the thing, Mozambique has fertile land that Kuwait doesn't even have. And Mozambique has other natural resources that Kuwait doesn't even have. So Mozambique was on its, is on its path to be better than Kuwait, right? I did a video about this, okay? That if, if the government was actually interested in helping, in turning their countries, developing their countries, this is the greatest opportunity. And the first thing they should be doing is start putting in investments in these areas before they even start digging up this gas. You start putting up schools, people see roads, hospitals starts going in, people things that serve people well. When people see that, and when by the time you start taking gold, uh, this uh, this gas, you start mining. You've already organized that majority of the people who are going to be employed in this in this uh, in in this industry will be from will be the local people. You've set people off. You started education, oil and gas, uh, uh, engineering, uh, uh, doing certificates, how to operate machinery, so that when this thing starts these people get jobs but that's not that's not what we see we see money spent billions of dollars instead of going investing in people investing in infrastructure in these areas if they invest this money in security you know because they want to steal they want to steal the money the wealth, the resources from the local people. And when the local people stand up and fight, and they have every right to do so, and fight for what's theirs, then they are condemned as terrorists. But listen to how the president of uh, Mozambique has reacted. Mozambique is surrounded by Botswana, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, Malawi, and South Africa. They have issues in South Africa, right? The Mozambican government has responded by going to hire a South, a South African militia group, a white South African militia group. Let me be specific. And I want you to see why this, there's, there's problems already here. So in South Africa, there's white militias. You know, so they've gone and hired their called security companies, but they are not security. These guys are highly trained, uh, militarized, uh, operation, uh, you know, in terms of the, the, the weaponry they have. It's all military level. Helicopters, you name it, they have it. They have it. And this is what they... Uh, uh, um, Mozambican government has gone and hired to kill their own people. So if someone hasn't been cloned, if something has if someone's brain hasn't been tempered with, why would you make such a decision? Why is it just hard, hard to say the money I'm spending on security, let me transfer, let, let me let's use this money to invest in the people before we even start digging because once you do that once you do that the people won't give you any problems you know people will know this has been proved proven over and over again if you live in the west 
for African diasporas in the West, for African Americans who live, who live, who live, who live in the West. You will know that, and it's really Africans that left Africa recently and they've moved to the West. You will agree with me that whichever country you are in in the West, when the economy is doing well, there's no problems. Everyone is cool. Everyone is cool. When the economy starts to bite, that's when they start talking about immigrants taking over their jobs. Because nothing makes someone angry than tempering with their pocket. This is when they start talking about immigrants taking over their jobs. So now, if we go to T Mozambique, for example, if the locals see all these people coming in, driving fancy cars, taking their gas, and the local people have nothing to benefit for, what do you think they will do? They will rise up, and that's what they've done. They've risen up and said, you ain't going to do that to us. No more. And because the president is not for the people, that's why you have to think about it. Is it possible that these people have been cloned? It sounds like crazy, talking crazy, but boy, some of the things, it's just hard to understand. So instead of the president going and sit down with the people and say, okay, let's find the way forward here. And believe me, once you put up a way forward that benefits the people, everything gets done. I'll give an example. Botswana. Botswana, they've done well with conservation. If you go to most African countries, Kenya, Tanzania, South Africa, you realize that most game reserves, animal reserves, are owned by white people, right? And when white people own this, they don't care about the local. Let's 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 let's, let's be real. They don't care about the local because they because they ain't local anyway. They care about one thing and one thing only, and you can't blame them to go there and make money. So when the tourists when the tourists come in, so the animals become protected, but the people don't get protected. So if you are a local, you see all these tourists coming, bringing money, and, and these um, uh, owners of whatever lodge next to the, make a lot of money, and you are not benefiting anything, and it's from your land, what do you do? You start poaching. But look what they did in Botswana. They involved people. They involved people. And now there's more animals than they even want. Because now people realize they are benefiting more by having the animals around instead of poaching them and that's what you need to do that's the solution that's what people that's what an african president who hasn't been cloned an african president whose brain is still african gonna do is gonna invest in all, in his own people and we can see how things change quickly you know africa can develop if china did it in 30 years africa can do it in 10 years if we just have leaders not just leaders though the people too, you know? Let's say, someone might say, ah, oh, maybe clones is, is too far-fetched. Maybe just something has been done to their brain. And I, and, I, and I thought about this and I said, yes, definitely, something has, has been done to their brain. I was looking at the white, uh, uh, I, was on my, I was on the internet and this white wild vision thing popped up. I know the old vision was an African kid holding a picture of a white family and smiling. You know, like holding, holding the picture real tight to his heart. Then I thought to myself, so how does this kid interpret the world? Just from that experience. What he sees is that white people are there to, res to rescue him. Now imagine if that same kid became president. What's the mindset that kid has? Because I tell you what, our school in Africa is also part of this cloning system, part of a uh, brain altering system. Because I tell you what, the current president of Tanzania, after the greatest uh, uh, African president that we've seen in a decade just passed away, taken taken out if you disagree that you was murdered then you are an idiot you are part of the problem if you are black and you disagree that this president was murdered 
uh, Magufuli was murdered, then you are part of the problem. They have a new leader. Personally, I don't have any high hopes for her. She worked for the UN. But there's a speech she gave while Magufuli was president. And she said this, right? She said this. We thought you were crazy. We thought, what is this man doing? Because you were doing something we've never seen before. Now, this woman worked for the UN. Right? She worked for the UN. She's done, you know. So there's a system that has been developed. What Magufuli proved is that if we want to develop our continent, we have to get out of the system. Get out of the matrix. Take the red pill. Get out. It's the only way we are going to develop. And guess what? Magufuli becomes president 2015. Within three years, Tanzania becomes a, a, a lower middle income country. Within three years, he did it. Magufuli becomes president. He builds a high speed train. He builds a hydroelectric dam. Money from Tanzania. He never borrowed money from any Western countries. Magufuli becomes president. He never left his country to go to the West. Magufuli dies. He dies at a local hospital. Never went out of his country to seek for help. There is no better leader than Magufuli right now in Africa. He showed us how to do it. He has shown us how to do it. And every African, every black person in this world, there is the path. That's how we become developed. That's how we prevent poverty in Africa. We have to look after ourselves first. We have to be independent. But we are not. Because what's happening in in Tanzania in, is mind-boggling. So the president there goes, hires this white militia. And this is why you also you should have a problem. Why is there a white militia in South Africa? This is why white people in South Africa aren't even scared. They will say whatever they want and do whatever they want. Because they have protection. Because I don't think... If you look at people that even support Julius Malema, who I think is good and is great, I think he talked about the vaccines and everyone uh, flipped out. But at the end of the day, believe it or not, we all gonna take this vaccine. Period. We all gonna take the vaccine. You know, it's just the way it's gonna be. The same way we take measles, polio, whatever vaccine, we gonna take this vaccine. The most unfortunate thing is that Africa is not producing a vaccine. We need vaccines. Africans started inoculation. If you never heard of a story of one Simas, an African enslaved uh, uh, a person in America who taught them how to inoculate, look into it. Unfortunately, there's no one, no country is making a vaccine in Africa today. That's because of the brain altering that starts when we start school. That starts actually before we are even born, when we are conceived. The moment we start hearing through our mom's stomachs, we hear white superiority. By the time we were born, we, were, we are born black with inferiority mindset. And that's what happens, that's what's happening right now in, um, in Mozambique. It's much cheaper for them to take the oil and pay security companies and to take the gas, rather, instead of investing in the people. They don't even pay taxes. What did Magufuli do to prove that these people don't pay taxes? When he became president, he canceled a mining contracts of most, most Western mines in Tanzania. And he slapped them with a $300 billion bill. Say, tax bill. And he was right about it because they never pay taxes. So what they want to do with the gas is take the gas for cheap. Pay the president a hundred million dollars for his retirement fund, into his retirement fund, and then steal the gas. And this is where Africa doesn't develop. Because we let these people do whatever they want to do to us. We don't stand up for nothing. 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 Our presidents don't stand up for nothing. They... In Mozambique, there shouldn't even be an issue. All you need to do is, we have gas. Yes, 
if you want to don't provide security invest in the people that's security right there you know i live in a country in a state in a country that's um that's all mining dude these the mining companies here give so much to the government so much money to the government in africa mining companies don't give nothing to the government and i tell you what the same mining companies that are here in australia they have mining companies in, in, in africa and the smaller ones they don't even make money in australia they make losses but they make profits in africa and then they use those profits to offset their losses here to keep the banks where they borrow money from here happy they play the game and it benefits them and so it should in this world you gotta play the game why is it that the middle east is more developed with only oil when africa has not just oil but they, we also have fertile land not that and we have other natural resources and yet and yet we are not developed so it's very clear that our brains are affected because of the education we get So it's very obvious what's happening in, in Mozambique. We have presidents that don't care about their people. That's, that's the only reason you see all these uh, 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 conflicts. And you have the, uh, the outside world that's willing to do anything it could to take, out, to take, to take a natural resources from Africa for free. And we're not able to defend it. What having a militia in South Africa has taught me is, is that the whole of Africa we need a militia in every country we need the, we need to militarize our people so they were able to defend ourselves there's a huge difference if you look at the conflict there's only about eight percent of whites in South Africa but you look at the when there's a conflict between them and hundreds of there would be like 20 white people and hundreds of thousands of uh, South Africans the, 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 the black South Africans are out there just dancing I am a Georgia. I am a, and these guys, 20 of these guys show up militarized. And guess what? The guys that are militarized look more confident than the guys that are marching. I am a Georgia, my Georgia, my Georgia. We need to stop that crap. It does not work. You know, there's a thing between modernized, there's a difference between modernization and westernization. Westernization is what we've become. Is, is, is what we, it's the current state of Africa, our mentality, the religion, and all that stuff. Modernization is what Shaka was trying to do. You know, so today they like to have these Zulu warriors, and they are there, they still have their usual uh, 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 um, uh, spears and, and shields and all that stuff. But that's old school. How have these warriors modernized? We become militarized. So now the Zulu warriors should be military warriors with modern guns. That's not westernization. That's just modernization. Because I tell you what, there's no way a Zulu warrior gonna stand up to a guy wearing with all the armory that other people have. You know, that's not westernization. That's just modernization. Even Shaka started to modernize his army. Almost 200 years ago. What we need is modernization. We need to change the education system. The education system is going to help Africa put, it's going to Af help African people elect um, uh, leaders who are for them. Because they're going to know what they want and what they need. But every African parent tried to let your kids know about Magufuli and what this man has done, not just in Tanzania, but for Africa. The same thing you should let your kids know about a man called Thomas Sankara. We can, we can develop in Africa within 10 years and we can be better than China, better than China. But we're not going to develop when we have this kind of leadership that's cloned. We need a better leadership. We need better leaders. You know, Tanz uh, Mozambique shouldn't be in a conflict right now. Mozambique should be fully developed. 
right now. They should put themselves on a path. We should see high-speed trains going into Mozambique. We should see uh, transportation getting better. We should be hearing free education. We should be hearing changing the whole education system. I bet you if Samora Mache was still alive, if it was Samora Mache time right now, that country would develop. We need to still put leaders that put Africans first, you know, and we need to think about militarizing our 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 communities not just the armies of africa but our communities i can understand why they sell guns to people in america i really do i can understand it you know because yeah i heard of a story of japan when japan was trying to attack america what they were worried about was the number of guns that people have that civilians have and then i watched uh, uh, uh there's a show on netflix called um, um battle for japan the age of the samurai. Um, one of their, one of their, one of their uh, um, um, samurai soldiers, uh, warriors there, who almost united uh, Japan. I think it was uh, uh, there was Oda Nobunaga started it. I think it was um, before uh, uh, before the last one. It was um, Yamamoto or Hiroshimoto or something like that. The first thing he did was to take weapons from his civilians so he could control them. So I know there's there's a bit of uh, too much with America, but I think it's it's not bad for you to militarize your community, your your citizens. Look at Singapore has done it. I think uh, 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 African leaders need to start focusing on this, militarize the community so so that we are able to defend ourselves. Because what's happening in Mozambique and it's happening in other African countries is just too much. It's too much. We've had enough. We shouldn't be starving. We should be the richest people in the world right now, the richest continent in the world right now. Natural resources, we already are the richest. Why doesn't that transfer to, um, to richest people in the world? No, it, it doesn't because of our education system and the leaders we have that allow and the way we look at white people. Because tell me, tell you what? It's French companies that are investing in these guys. American companies, French companies that are in It's not even China. They took China out by outbeating them. So it's just them. I I, I, and I can tell you what, if China was there, there might not even be these conflicts. Because white people like to take things for free. Our relationship with Europe, by now we should be aware of it. Guys, I'm, I just wanted to give this rant. I don't want to go on for too long. Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe. Thank you.